everyone. This is Tammy Hands from Tammy Hands Ministries. And today is May 16th, 2022. And um, the Lord has been speaking to me quite a bit in the last uh, while. And um, um, he has spoken to me many times before, but I just, you know, uh, recorded it uh, in my laptop and didn't know what to do with it. And when he came in an abundance in March and April, he definitely made it clear to me that he wanted me to share the messages. So I ventured out to do the YouTube videos. It isn't anything I normally would do. Um, so I'm out there making these videos and, and I had a lot of messages from March and April. And this is my second last one from April. And then I will be continuing in May as he gives them to me in May. I will continue to make the videos for as long as he continues to give me the message. We never know how God's going to work. We don't know if these messages are forever, for today, or, you know, just a short period of time. But as long as he keeps giving me his word and visions, I will continue to share them with you. And um, so I just wanted to also mention that um, um, a lot of times Holy Spirit will come over me during the messages. And um, actually, I prefer that because I want Holy Spirit to speak through me and to um, really deliver a great message for, for you from God or Jesus. And I consider myself just the messenger. And, um, and, I, and I welcome Holy Spirit to come and speak through me. And, um, you know, I ask Holy Spirit that you will um, minister through me. And, and um, whoever is watching these videos, I pray that you will receive the message just as I did. And, and that you will feel Holy Spirit and Jesus and God coming right into you through the screen of your um, device. And I also, I would like to say, I command the wicked spirits of any type that may try to interfere with this video or um, from God's word being put out and from anyone trying to receive this message, I cast out any wicked spirits in the name of Jesus through the authority of Jesus Christ and I um, bind you to the cross where you were defeated and you will stay there. You have no legal right to be around me um, or anyone else watching this video. And that I say that in Jesus' mighty precious name through the authority of Jesus Christ. Because sometimes um, when we are engaging and maybe trying to learn or hear God's word, the enemy really doesn't want anybody else to hear his word. So he sometimes will you know, make sure your, your computer or your device breaks down or your internet goes off or, or mine. And so it's very good to um, cast him out of what we're doing here. Make sure he's not interfering in any way. He's not allowed to be here. And um, we can continue. I just want to uh, plug in my, <laughs> as we say, devices. I want to make sure, sorry. And the other thing is, that this is a one-time take. We're not um, Hollywood here. I don't have any professional setup. It's just myself. And um, we want to do, um, I'm trying to fix this, um, a one-time take because I want it to be authentic. As I'm, If I had to stop it and start it, I don't think Holy Spirit would deliver the message like, like he intends to. So we're not going to be stopping anything, no matter what happens. Um, I've had, you know, quite a few um, bloopers on <laughs> blips and everything on the other videos, and I just have to go with it. It makes me laugh. I hope it makes you laugh when there's funny little things happening. Um, and the other thing before we get started is um, when Holy Spirit does come through, uh, he can manifest himself in many ways. Um, sometimes he, he touches me, like my hair or my body, and sometimes he can jerk you around when he's on you, um, or around you, or in you, and, um, you know, it's a very emotional thing, too, so, um, sometimes I may become emotional, um, or I may become forceful, because, um, God really wants you to hear a message, and, or he's very angry with the enemy, so he may become forceful through me. That is not my personality type. I'm pretty even keeled and um, pretty gentle of a person. But when um, Holy Spirit speaks through me, he, he may, um, you know, um, come out more forceful than I normally would. Anybody who knows me personally knows exactly who I am and what I'm saying. So I'm generally even keeled, pretty, um, pretty um, gentle. So um, sometimes that's how he manifests as well. Um, so that's just how it's going to be. And, um, 
I uh, would like to get started. And, and again, uh, we invite Holy Spirit to come and and um, sh and show your presence and to really um, manifest yourself um, around the people that are watching these videos because I want you to experience God's word. I want you to experience God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit just as I do. Um, okay, so here we go. April 12, 2022 at 8.26 a.m. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, Thou shalt not fear, saith the Lord, for this opens cracks and allows the enemy to slither in. Put on my full armor, my children, and trust and believe that I will protect you. Take up my sword and slay the enemy with my truth. Jesus is Lord and Savior and reigns over all. However, sorry, whoever believes in him will forever live without fear. Protect yourself, my children, under the blood of Jesus. Have no fear. The blood is the most powerful vengeance and will burn the eyes of the enemy. Open your eyes, my children. You have such mighty power and protection that I have given you to fight this spiritual battle. I hear your cries for help. I see the fear in your eyes. I tell you now, put on my full armor. Keep my sword in hand. Let my words flow from your tongue at all times. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Let the love in your heart grow almighty like a mustard seed and remove all fear from your heart. Allow my son to fill your heart and he alone will protect you. He lives in you, my children. The moment you accepted him into your life, he stepped inside you. You have the power of my son, Jesus, living in you and through you. Now open your mind and your heart and allow him to work through you. Listen to his voice. Listen to the truth and not the lies of the enemy. He will walk you through this battle unscathed. Stay close to your Redeemer. Listen close and follow his voice. For Jesus Christ, my Son, is your true Lord and Savior. Dig your roots firmly into the earth. Do not waver, for what is about to come will shatter many. But those of you who have committed your hearts to my Son will be protected. It's time for the oak tree anointing. Stand firm, stand strong. Do not waver, my children. Know your place is with me, your Father in heaven. The enemy will try to blast you. Take up my shield and reflect his fiery darts. Take up my sword and cut through the lies. Speak the truth with your tongue. Let the enemy know which side of the war you are on. The side of righteousness, faith, love, and peace. The side that Jesus Christ fought for with his life. He sacrificed his life and shed his blood to save you, my children. The battle is won. The battle has already been won, my children. Break the chains of fear. You have greatness in you. You have power in you. Walk boldly in faith with your Savior, Jesus the Christ. Your Father has spoken. Hold on, please. Thank you. Okay, so um, a couple of things that um, these are the areas because I always like pray and say, what do you want me to um, 
um, look up in scripture? Is there anything? Sometimes there's nothing. This one was quite a few actually. So I hope you can stay with me on this. I'm just going to um, look these up here, okay? So um, God says, when um, Holy Spirit comes over me, over me it, it's emotional. So it's difficult to talk. Um, you know, right in the very beginning, God says, um, and, he, and he's saying it quite a bit in the message, um, put on my full armor. I'm going to put this here if I can. I don't have a very good setup. <laughs> um, he says, put on my full armor, my children. And throughout the message, um, you know, he's saying it quite a bit, um, put on my full armor. And he also says, keep my sword in hand. Let my words flow from your tongue at all times. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. And um, I know there's another part here. Um, okay. I'll, oh. Towards the end. He says, the enemy will try to blast you. Take up my shield and reflect the fiery darts. Take up my sword and cut through the lies. Speak the truth with your tongue. Let the enemy know which side of the war you're on. So um, um, I went to, a few, and, and I've said this in other messages, and he's, you know, he really puts this on me too. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, the whole armor of God. Whew. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's, God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the, stra um, the strategies of the, of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. That's a spirit world. Against mighty powers in this dark world. And against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then again, I mean, then, then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, whew, hold up the, the faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Okay. God's armor. It is. God's armor. It is a spiritual armor. But if you can imagine if there was a real army and a real war going on, how do how do army guys, you know, the military, how do they armor up? Okay? It's a they have a physical um, armor. God's is spiritual. Okay, when you see, um, you know, an army that's going to battle, they have helmets on to protect their minds, to protect their heads from the enemy. They have bulletproof vests on to protect from bullets. They have armor on, in like, depending on, you know, if they're in the riot squads and, you know, there's different types of uh, military they have like shields that they use and they have face shields and and they have like lo big long heavy duty gloves to protect their arms and they have you know shields that even go over their midsection so um you know and and high army still toed army boots and not to mention their artillery their their guns and everything so god's armor is real and it we can't see it with our human eyes but the enemy 
devil, Lucifer, Satan, and the fallen angels, the wicked ones, they live in the spiritual world and they can see God's armor. And when you say it with your mouth, you truly are putting it on. It is real. And God keeps saying for us to put it on. It's not a joke. It's not a game. It exists and it's real. And we, need to, we need to put it on. We need to call upon those words. We need to call upon God's armor and seriously do it every day and put it on. Because the enemy won't be able to penetrate you. And when we put it on, I'm not saying that we will be 100% protected because even a, a military guy in the, in the army, if he even has all of his helmet and shield and everything, there are areas that he may get shot or he, he may, you know, step into um, an explosive area and he still may get hurt. But, but, the, but that armor will really help him, okay? So God is saying for us to put on his armor. It will help us. It truly will help us. Okay, so we need to put it on. So, as I was saying, you know, the helmet of salvation, we have to protect our heads, and that is, the salvation is, we are one with Christ. We gave our, our soul to Jesus, okay? God's protecting us. The shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, and the, the sword for the spirit, which is God's word. And that's why he he taught, he says, slay, and I don't know if it's in this message, I'll have to read it again. You know, a lot of times he says, slay the enemy with my word, because that's what hurts the enemy is the truth. God's word. When we say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I mean it, and you are casted out, you have no legal right over me. Those words, the words from the Bible are God's words, God's holy words. When we say those words out loud, the enemy can hear them and it makes him flee. It makes him run from us because he knows we're protected and we're protected by God's word. It's like a sword. That's our sword. A, a, a real army guy has his, he might have a knife or a sword. Um, I know back in the old days they had swords. Um, but, you know, nowadays they seem more to have like, uh, you know, artillery, like rifles and things and guns. But we have God's word, which is like a sword. When we speak those words from the Bible, it's like we're cutting the enemy like a knife. We're cutting them with the sword. So when we say the sword of the spirit, the sword of God's word, it truly is a sword and it cuts the enemy and it cut him away from you and, and cut him down to the ground under your feet. We have to walk in this belief. We have to believe it and put the God's armor on and do it every day and truly believe that you are protected by this, by his armor. Okay. I have to split the screen. I'm not so good at this. Okay. You with me still? <laughs> so um, the next part that really stood out was Jesus is Lord and Savior and reigns over all. Whoever believes in him and who and will forever live without fear, but will forever live. Okay, that's an important part. So um, I have John 640. And this is the will of him who sent me. So that's Jesus saying, God who sent me that everyone who sees the Son, which is Jesus, and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So we will have everlasting life, everlasting pr protection, and we will live forever without fear. Okay. And the next part that really oh God wanted me to emphasize that stood out is the blood is the most powerful vengeance. It's the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice he made for us, that is, is the most powerful form of vengeance against the enemy. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, Jesus already defeated the enemy on the cross. And now when you accept Jesus, we can defeat the enemy. Jesus already did it for us. We just need to believe it now and accept Jesus. So I'm going to refer to Hebrews 13, 12. So also Jesus suffered and died outside of the city gates to make his people holy by means of his own blood. 
So Jesus suffered. We're, we're suffering too. So don't even think that that uh, our like God's son didn't suffer. He suffered too. And um, God knows that we're suffering too. And, and, and this message is saying that um, when Jesus suffered, he made his people holy by the means of his own blood. So that's why God is saying, have no fear. The blood is the most powerful vengeance and we will burn the eyes of the enemy. We need to believe this wholeheartedly. These are God's messages. God, you know, he's waking people up in the night, taking people up to heaven. You know, he's he's catching them up and giving every, you know, giving certain people glimpses of heaven because he's trying to pour out what's real now. These are, you know, important times that we're living in and God really is the enemy's hard at work, people. The enemy is so fierce and he's so hard at work right now and God is stepping it up. The enemy's stepping it up and now God is stepping it up. And you're going to hear more and more people prophesying and messengers from God and, and people getting caught up to heaven and, and experiencing what heaven is really about and coming down here and telling us the truth and what lies ahead and what 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 magnificent world is waiting for us and the, 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 the paradise that's waiting and Father God who's waiting and the truth is we are going to heaven and it really exists and God is showing it clearly more and more. People are getting caught up to heaven and they're coming down here and telling us the, the, the magnificence of heaven, how the beauty of it, it's real. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm. So you're going to be hearing more and more. We need to believe it, people. We need to believe it. God is being so strong in his words. And, and he is, he is, he's stepping up his game. The devil is stepping up his game. And I know everyone knows it. I know you know it. We all are feeling it. We are all seeing it. If you haven't seen that, that this world is, it's, it's, it's increasingly getting, you know, I don't want to give the enemy any, um, any, uh, boosting right now. I don't want him to think he's winning because he's not. He's stepping up his game, but God is stepping up his game more than him. God is one step ahead of the enemy. So that is why God is waking everybody up. He's going to be giving more and more people visions, more and more people dreams. He's going to be coming to people in their, in their dreams. He's going to wake you up in the night and he's going to give you a message. And it isn't just for you. He's going to want you to share it with people. That's why he's coming to us. And you will feel the urgency like I am. I don't care what people think. People know me and think, oh, well, she's giving all these messages. I'm working for God. I don't work for man. I work for God. He is my father. I truly believe heaven exists. And I know these messages are coming to me. And I'm delivering them. And if, if people want to watch them, great. And I pray for divine intervention for people to turn on the internet and they will find these videos and videos of other people that have prophetic messages who have had the dreams and visions of God. We need all the help we can get people. So we got to start listening to God's word. We got to seek out people that have these messages from God and we got to truly listen to the messages. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so the other part that stood out in the message was, um, you have such mighty power and protection that I have given you to fight the spiritual battle. I hear your cries for help. So again, that comes in Ephesians six twelve, and I'm going to go, uh, back. oh yeah, I got it right here. Um, that is the, that is the section I read in the beginning about putting on all of God's armor, but the little section in, in there, um, the verse in there was, um, for we, this is very important. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood enemies means our fellow man or women. Um, you know, we are not fighting against our neighbors and our, you know, people on this planet. I mean, the real fight is against the enemy, Satan, Lucifer, and the devil and the fallen angels who got kicked out of heaven. They're the enemy because they're against God. And I'm for God, so he's my enemy. And if you have God in your life, then you're against them, and that's your enemy too. 
when we have an enemy in our life, it's because they're trying to hurt us. They're trying to kill us. They're, they're, they're terrible. Now, if you think you have an enemy in this world, somebody that hurt you uh, or did something, okay, I'm not trying to minimize that because some people are, they're wicked because they're under the control. I'm going to go back to this my eyeballs keep going back and forth here. There are people, that, uh, the enemy works through us. He, he needs to work through flesh. He does come in the spirit form, which I have seen many times. He does come in spirit form and certain people can see uh, into the spirit realm. They can see good angels, bad angels, or just one or the other. Um, I have seen wicked spirits and it's not pretty. It's not nice. And, and it used to scare me until I knew my authority in Jesus Christ and I cast them out when I see them. Um, and we cannot fear them. So I have learned, I, I used to live in fear. And the enemy was around. And sometimes you don't know. You just feel uh, you got this depression or you're scared. You don't even know why. You might hear noises in your house in the, in the night um, or, or bad things, you know, keep coming into your life. You're riddled with sickness and, and um, you, you say you have bad luck and you don't know why everything happens to you. It's because the enemy is trying to take control of your life. He's on you. And that's what God's trying to say here. We have to put on his armor. We can't see it. We can believe it and we can visualize it and imagine it, but the enemy can actually see it. And when he sees you and hears you putting it on, he's like, uh oh, guess what? He's got his little book of who he can attack. And he goes, mm, I better scratch them off my list because they're under God's armor. It's going to be pretty hard to penetrate them. So I'm going to move on to somebody easier, um, somebody weaker. And I don't want the enemy to attack them either, but I'm trying to prepare whoever can hear this and whoever's listening to be stronger and not be weak so the enemy can attack you. We all got to be strong. We got to get stronger. So here we are. We're fighting, you know, our, our enemy. Oh, you know, um, you know, keep your stuff on your side of the lawn. We, we fight over the, the silliest things. Um, you know, um, you know, his dog runs over in my yard or, you know, uh, you know, his kids keep coming in my yard or his leaves blow over in my yard in the fall. Who cares? Oh my goodness. Of all the things going on in the world, those are such minimal things. You might be mad at somebody at your work. Oh, they, they left their desk a mess or they left too much work for me. Or, um, you know, they, they, um, I don't even know. <laughs> I've been self-employed for so long. I don't know what it's like to work with people. Um, but they, it is minimal things. And when you allow it to bother you, guess what? The enemy just got into that little crack. He found a way to get into your life and he's irking you. He's annoying you. And, and he's going to turn you against that person. So there's animosity at work or between you and your neighbors, or he'll find a way to get in between you and your friends. And um, that's how he works. He doesn't just show up and go ah! and scare you. Yeah. Once in a while he does that too. But for most people, he slithers in through other people and he will put things in your mind. Doesn't that annoy you when, when that guy from work does that? Doesn't that annoy you when she leaves her cup there and doesn't clean up her desk? And it's, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't look. Who cares? Like, just worry about your own life and what you got going in your own self and just go to work with your blinders on. You know, go outside with your blinders on. If you have a, a neighbor that's annoying, which a lot of us do, then just don't worry about it. You know, we have to ignore things and, um, and actually God wants us to be nice to them. If you think someone is your enemy, God wants you to be nice to them because when we do that, the enemy surely cannot get into your life. He, if, if you have a neighbor that's bugging you and, uh, you know, or you were annoyed by them and all of a sudden you're friendly to them. Hey, Joe, Hey, Sarah, you know, how's it going? I, I said, Hey, Sarah, like I'm a man. <laughs> hey, Sarah. Um, I have personally had to do that. I, I don't, I don't think my neighbor will ever watch this video. Um, but I had some run-ins with uh, a particular neighbor and, um, you know, I, I was being pretty brash about things and, uh, you know, I, I was taking a stance and then I thought, I can't do that. I can't do that. And I pushed myself so hard. I, I want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. I want to be friends with everybody. I want to be friendly, I should say, with everyone. It's very hard to live in your neighborhood when your those neighbors, that's your family. 
those are the people you see on a regular basis and you, you live right next to them. You know, we have true family by blood, but they probably live far away. And the people that you live in this little, you know, community with, those are very key people in your life, believe it or not. It's very important for us to be courteous and kind and to to get along with them. See, I'm getting off course here, but it's I feel Holy Spirit leads me into another area and another area. So we go wherever it goes, okay? So it's it's very important to not let the enemy in when it comes to that's how he when we say we're not we're not fighting against flesh and blood um in the Ephesians 6:12 we're fighting against the true enemy he's unseen unless he reveals himself um in his spiritual way um but most of the time he's going to work through people he's going to work through people he's whispering in your ear he's whispering in your neighbor's ear maybe maybe your neighbor is irritated with you and now we got to make it amends and we say, I'm not going to let the enemy into my neighborhood. I go walking down the streets. I walk my dog every night. And I go down the streets casting out wicked spirits out of my town, out of my uh, where I live, out of my whole neighborhood, out of my neighbor's houses, out of off my neighbor's properties. And I don't want any, any wickedness in my entire area because I don't want it coming around me. But I, I want to love people. I want to love my entire area where I live. So when I'm walking, I'm like, you know, you wicked spirits, you come out of these houses. I command, um, you know, abuse and, and poverty and, and uh, um, you know, anger and fear and addictions. I command you out of everyone's homes, out of every person. So instead of fighting with your neighbor who you got to know that it's the enemy doing that to you and doing it to your neighbors or doing it to who you think are your true enemies or doing it to co-workers, that's how the enemy is getting into your life. And he's, we need to walk in the fruits of the spirit, which is the personality traits that Jesus had. And they're all wonderful things. Nice. They're beautiful personality traits. Nothing mean, nothing rude, nothing with anger or, or confrontation. That's not how Jesus was. That's not how God wants us to be. So, Let's realize that the enemy is working through people. So our fight isn't against man or woman. You know, it's just the same. Um, it is truly with the devil, Lucifer, and um, Satan, and the fallen angels. They're the ones who are trying to seep into each and every one of us. And that's who we need to be angry with. And it's okay to be angry with them because it's righteous anger. It's God's anger. We're allowed to be anger, angry with the enemy. We take it out on him, not our enemies that he is infecting, not our co-workers that he's infecting, and take a good look at ourselves because he's probably infecting you too. And I mean me too. I'm not saying I'm better than anyone. I, I definitely am not saying that. He ch so we need to take a good look at our own self too. Is it me that he's infecting and making me have confrontation? Because, you know, I'm not saying it's always a two-sided uh, you know, it's it takes two to tango kind of thing. Sometimes it is a one-sided, but we need to look deep inside our own self too. Am I contributing to this problem at work or in my with my neighbors or with a family member, let's say? Fire of God comes on you too. And he, whoo, 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 whoo. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm in Florida right now. I'm like uh, <laughs> on the hot beach right now because I'm on fire with God and it's like 100 degrees right now. <laughs> and I like to say this. No, it's not a hot flash because I am past those days. I don't have those. Only when I'm speaking God's word, it comes out. Fire of God comes on you. So that means God really liked that point that I was getting across. All right, I'm just gonna finish that. I gotta shrink my screen and uh, go back to this. So, uh, we are not fighting against flesh and blood, as, as, I, as I was saying. The enemy is in the people, and we gotta realize that, and we gotta help each other, love each other, and, and work around these situations, and pray for them, and ourselves, to not argue with people. Pray for them that, that God will, um, you know, pray that the enemy comes away from them. 
Um, okay, so we are we are fighting against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, evil spirits, and against mighty powers in this dark world, the enemy, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. I'm going to get my screen back here. So how are evil spirits in the heavenly places, you may ask? Um... So, and these are things I, I, I'm learning everything myself. God is like putting everything in and I'm learning from other Christians and everything and my pastor. And um, so I just want to say, I have a really, if, if he ever watches this video, I have a, a really amazing pastor. His name is Pastor Mike. And I'm going to cry right now because he is a good guy. He really follows the Lord. He really loves the Lord. And he has had some pretty tough times lately. And his family. He has been under attack of the enemy. Yes, the enemy can attack pastors too. When you are serving the Lord, a lot of times the enemy is sometimes on you even more, but I don't want to scare you. Because I want you to serve the Lord because you will be rewarded in heaven. And for whatever you are suffering on this planet right now, on this earth, God will repay you in heaven for everything the enemy took from you. And anything that you suffered on this planet, you will be rewarded in heaven. It is not a waste. If you are, if you are under attack of the enemy and you have fear and depression and loneliness and addictions and poverty, and, um, you know, there's many terrible things that, that can be happening to us. Just know that God loves you and you will be rewarded in heaven for everything that you suffered. Mm. Okay. I have to regroup and get myself going here again. Um, okay, we were back at the, at the enemy. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to pray that Holy Spirit comes back here. Split my screen back here. Okay. So um the whole the whole thing about we're under attack by the enemy, okay? The enemy does attack us. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a full thing here. I don't think I don't know what you see, but I just see a slipper of myself here. So the enemy, like I was saying, this is an important point because I, I keep coming back to it. The enemy, yes, he comes in a spiritual way around us. And, um, you know, you may be sitting alone and all of a sudden you feel loneliness. Or you just don't feel good. You feel heaviness on you or you feel fear or you just feel depressed or anxiety. That is the enemy trying to manifest on you. And whenever you, sometimes we don't pay attention and, and you just feel like terrible all day. Or, so, or for quite a long time. And I need you to realize it. God wants you to realize it right now. It is the enemy trying to manifest on you. So this is how the, the wicked one comes. He will, he will come to you directly or he will come through other people. And so he will try to destroy you and hurt you at any every turn in your life. So he will do it in, on an individual basis, coming at you, coming at you. That's why you got to have the armor on. Or he's going to, come at you like like what I was saying through your neighbors, co-workers, friends, or just strangers even. You know, you, you say, you know, um, why was that person mean to me today? Or why did that why did that person hurt me? Or you know, there's so many situations. So we always gotta have the armor on and know that there is an evil spiritual world that is trying to attack you pretty much on a daily basis. And um so we need to realize that and protect ourselves and to cast out the wicked spirits in Jesus 
uh, authority and put on God's armor. And of course, we need to have Jesus Christ in our, in our life, in our heart. That is by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And he's, when you accept him as your Savior, he saves you from the enemy. So the enemy can't take you when you die. Your spirit has to go to heaven or hell. It's going to go to one or two places. So when you say you want Jesus as your, to be your Savior, then he just saved you from hell. And you can say it at any time in your life. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please come and live in my heart. And at the end of this video, I will say a simple prayer that you can um, repeat after me to help to bring you if you want to have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Okay. Um, moving on a little bit here. So, so then God is saying, um, you know, uh, I hear your cries for help. I see the fear in your eyes. I tell you now, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Let the love, I'm oh, sorry, keep my sword in hand. Let my words flow from your tongue at all times. I love that. So I went to uh, Luke 13, 19. It is, and, the, and this is what um, the Lord says, it is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted. Hmm, is that the right one? No, that's not the right one. Hmm. Where did I see mustard seed? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not, that's not. The mustard seed is. I told you, I'm not professional. I'm doing my best. Um... Oh, yeah. Okay. Those were two separate points. I'm sorry. Um, so God says, let the love in your heart grow almighty like a mustard seed and remove all fear from your heart. I'm going to read this and explain it. So Luke 13, 19 says, It is like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree and the birds make nests in its branches. So I just want to expand on that. A lot of Christians already know the parable of the mustard seed. So the mustard seed is a tiny, tiny seed. But, and it's amazing because it is such a tiny seed, but it actually grows like, like a tree. It grows so huge, so huge that tree, uh, birds can land in it, in its branches. And usually that's not the case when, when you're growing a large plant, um, or a large, like, let's look at, uh, just take, um, a corn, like corn and the corn stalk for an example, corn seeds. The corn is the little corn and you plant that and it's a bigger, it's bigger and it grows pretty big like a corn stalk, but to grow a tree, usually it's not a tiny seed. It is, um, much bigger and, um, and I'm like not professional. I don't know, uh, all of what all the seeds are or what the size and everything. <laughs> Lord, you didn't prepare me for that. Um, but what he's trying to say is that a mustard seed is tiny and usually tiny seeds just grow small plants but this tiny mustard seed grows huge like a big tree and it's so big that that um, birds can land in it so you know it can't be like a little tomato plant where if a bird landed on it the the branch would snap off it's it's hardy and strong and big so he is God saying, let the love in your heart grow almighty like a mustard seed and remove all the fear from your heart. Mm. Woo. Hmm. Hmm. So if you were to take that small mustard seed and put it in your heart. He's saying, let your heart grow as big as a, 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 the tree. I don't, I don't, it says a tree here in his word, but I didn't know if it was a big bush, uh, but it's like a tree that grows. So take the tiny mustard seed, put it in your heart and let it grow so big like a tree. That's how much love you need in your heart to wart off or ward off the enemy, to scare off the enemy. When you have that much love in your heart, for each other and obviously for God and Jesus, 
the enemy has so much of a harder time of attacking you because you're untouchable. Now, nah, that's a bad word. You're more untouchable than if you had your heart closed up and you didn't have Jesus in there and you didn't have God in your life, then the enemy, you are prime material for him, prime prey. When you haven't given your life to Jesus or you maybe did at some time ago and you've closed your heart off and you turn to the wicked world and you put Jesus on the back burner, now the enemy can come in. He, he, he found a crack. He found a way in. So God is saying, you need to let the love in your heart grow almighty like a mustard seed and remove all fear from your heart. Make yourself strong. This is how we get stronger. Imagine the mustard seeds there and it's grown as big as a big tree. So big the tree uh, birds can land on it and branches don't break off. And imagine your heart growing strong and big. So big that all the fear for the enemy is gone, my friend. Gone. Whew, that's a good one. Um... So then the other, I'll go back now because I got ahead of myself. So that part, what I said, keep my, put on my full armor, keep my sword in hand. Let my words flow from your tongue at all times. Mm -mm -mm. So I went over to, I love this. I, tr I truly love this. The Lord led me into the Bible to find this because I say, okay, Lord, when he gives me his word, and just before I'm doing the video, this just happened like five minutes before the video, I say, Lord, uh, is there anything from this message that you want me to, um, you know, compare in the Bible? And and so this one had a lot, you know, everything he, I'm, he's like, you know, this one, and I underlined a whole bunch of things. And um, um, so this one is from, he led me to 2 Samuel 23, 2. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His words are upon my tongue. Mm. That is exactly what's happening right now. Holy Spirit is speaking through me. Yes, it is my flesh of Tammy Hands. My mouth, Tammy Hands, is speaking. And Tammy Hands is here. I am the messenger. And the Lord, when you are willing, the Lord, you allow him to speak through you. He will. And that's exactly what the message said. And he led me to that. I didn't know that. There's so many things in the Bible I don't know. 2 Samuel 23, 2. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His words are upon my tongue. And in his message that he gave me that I wrote down, he said, put on my full armor, keep my sword in hand, let my words flow from your tongue at all times. Remember I was saying the sword of the Spirit God's sword is his word, the Bible. So he is saying, let my words, which is the words in the Bible, those are all. You, people say, well, those were man written. God came upon those people and gave them the words to write down. And eventually it became the book, the Bible. But everything in the Bible is what God spoke through those men or women to, to, um, to, to, to speak. And let my words flow from your tongue at all times. So God wants us, in order to be protected from the enemy, we need to be constantly speaking his words. And there's a lot of people who say, I don't feel comfortable reading the Bible. It's hard to read. I got an easy to read version, which helps because it's difficult for me. It just doesn't always register in my mind. Some people can read the Bible and it makes sense to them. Like everything is, you know, it comes together. Their brain absorbs it so well. And, um, you know, that's not me. It's very difficult for me. And many people say it's difficult. Like they try to read it. So definitely the the old King James version is very difficult to understand. But you can, you can get an easy to read version that really, it really helped me. Then you pray before you're going to read the Bible and say, Holy Spirit, come. Please help me to understand the word. Help it to resonate in my mind. Help my mind to absorb it and remember it and learn it. So I started doing that and that helps uh, too. So, um, and, and God just, when he says, let my words flow from your tongue at all times. You know, I am not reading the Bible 24 seven. I'm speaking his words from what I've learned from the Bible. So yes, reading the Bible is important because that's where we learn the word, but he, but 
Everywhere we go, we're speaking about Jesus and God. That's speaking his word. He wants his word to be on our tongue at all times. So, you know, wherever, when we meet somebody, you know, God bless, like when you say goodbye to somebody or um, um, somebody sneezes, God bless you. Like, I mean, that's a, a small thing, but it all of those things matter. So we need to put God's word back into everything that we say and do. And, um, you know, have a blessed day. Uh, there's, you know, we, there's so many ways we could be putting God's word in there. And if there's an unbeliever and he hears that, sometimes that's all they needed to hear was that, that little word of God that will wake their brain up. Like, wow, there's actually people still saying that. There's people who still believe in God. There's still people who, um, you know, are, are speaking God's word. And, and so the smallest things like the mustard seed can manifest and, and turn into something much greater. So God is saying, keep my words flowing from your tongue at all times. Plus, it keeps the enemy far from us. The more we're speaking God, God's word, and we have his armor on, the more we love God and praise him, the less the enemy has a, a, a way of slithering in to get us. We don't have wide open gaps at, at that point in our life. We may have little sliver, little tiny cracks. And, um, you know, and we have to really pray that he doesn't make his way in. And we got to be diligent and and really work on this. And uh, so one more, one more uh, piece from the Bible that God uh, um, pointed out was he's saying, just seeing how far back. Okay, so let me read this whole little paragraph. For Jesus Christ, my son, is your true Lord and Savior. Dig deep, sorry, dig your roots... <laughs> Roots. What's that's not even a word. <laughs> Dig your roots. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna. This is Tammy Hand speaking. Why did God even choose me <laughs> as a messenger? I can't even barely speak, but He chose me. So you, you got to put up with me. For Jesus Christ, my Son, is your true Lord and Savior. Dig your roots firmly into the earth. Do not waver, for what is about to come will shatter many. But those of you who have committed your hearts to my son, will be protected. It's time for the oak tree anointing. Stand firm. Stand strong. Do not waver, my children. Know your place is with me, your Father in heaven. Hmm. Hmm. This is, um, this is a scripture that I found that I was led to. Isaiah 613, as an oak tree whose stump remains when it is cut down, so the holy seed shall be in its stump. Hmm. So, woo -hoo -hoo, Holy Spirit is all over me. <laughs> hmm. So he, God is saying, we need to, we need to um, dig our roots firmly into the ground and we need to not waver. We need to be strong and solid now. And, um, and it's time for the oak tree anointing. We need to stand firm, stand strong and do not waver my children. And as that, that verse was saying, even when the oak tree was cut down. The holy seeds were still in that oak tree. The roots are so firmly in the ground. If you try to get that stump out of the ground, it is not coming out. When it is an oak tree, it is those those roots are so firmly in there and so deep in there. And 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 that verse is saying that that the holy seed is in that stump. It that stump is not going anywhere. It's not wavering. So it is called the oak tree anointing. This is the time for the oak tree anointing where we need to be warriors. And we need to stand strong and be firmly planted in the ground. Firmly. We will not allow the enemy to infect us or come into our lives. We need to be firm and stand on God's word. And we need to know who our Lord and Savior is and who we are in Christ. God wants us to know who we are in Christ. We are 
a child of the Almighty Father God, and we are saved by the blood of Je we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Time to be strong, people. Time to plant your roots deep in the soil. Time to stand firm. We are standing up to the enemy. We will not let him take us out. And God is saying, for what? Mm. For what is about to come will shatter many. But those of you who will have committed your hearts to my son will be protected. Wickedness is, is coming. Wickedness is getting stronger. And God is trying to warn us. He's trying to say we gotta stand strong. We gotta we gotta know who we are in Christ. We gotta know that we are truly God's children. We gotta be practicing Christians. We gotta make amends with people who we're fighting with. That's the enemy. He's doing it to us. We can't let him in. We can't let him win, and we can't let him in. We gotta be strong and we can't waver and we can't let the fear of what's going on in the world we can't let it affect us and infect us we gotta we gotta we gotta cast it out and we gotta be firm we gotta know that god is our jesus is our lord and savior and god is our savior and god is there for us okay but we gotta get through this 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 life okay we we, we gotta we gotta we gotta get through it and we will see god on the other side he will make sure he will, he will, he will lead us through it. He will get us through it. He will get us to the other side. And that is how we're going to get there is by listening to his word and by following the messages that he's giving us that we need to be firm, strong, fight the enemy. Stop fighting with people in our lives because they don't mean to do it. They are infected by the enemy. And if they don't realize it, well, at least we have to realize it and back down from that fight. Walk away from it. Do not let the enemy drag you into it. End it somehow. Find a common ground. Either you just stay away from those people or, you know, start being friendly. Start showing the love of God and, 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 and turn it around and, 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 and make amends with people. Because the enemy is trying to turn us against each other. He's, he's so wicked. He's so weaving in between all of us. He's weaving in and out of our, everybody's lives. He's trying to hurt us all. And he's trying to use us to hurt each other. We can't let him do that. We can't let him divide us. We can't let him in. And we can't let him use us to hurt each other anymore. We can't. We got to end it. We got to do what God wants us to do now, which is to love each other, forgive each other, and and not hurt each other. That's what God wants. He doesn't want all this, this strife and fighting and anger and unforgiveness and, and uh, you know, so much hurting going on in the world. God doesn't want that. He doesn't want us to do that. But he also knows that we are under attack of the enemy. And we can't just say, oh, you know, the enemy made me do it. Okay, so we realize it's not right. And the enemy is on all of us. And we need to make it right. We need to, we need to follow God's plan and God's ways. We've got to make it right. And we've got to stop the enemy from getting in. We've got to cast him out. And then we've got to make amends. And we've got to, have, we've got to start forgiving people. And, and maybe we need to ask people to forgive us too. Maybe we were bad. You know, look inside your own heart. Look inside yourself. Are, are you um, contributing? Okay, like, you know, don't just blame things on other people. I'm not saying that it's your fault. You know, sometimes it is just one person's fault. But look, dig deep. Is there something I'm doing wrong? Am I provoking this situation? Can I make this better? 
and 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 even if you're not doing anything wrong find a way to make it right because maybe the other person doesn't have the love of God in their heart and they don't know about God maybe you can approach them and tell them about God tell them about Jesus because once you have Jesus in your heart it's pretty hard to be mean to people it's pretty hard to fight with people Well, that is it for, um, you know, the scripture that God has um, given me for his message. And, and I, I feel like I can tell when Holy Spirit isn't speaking to me anymore. I feel like that is, um, you know, that the Lord really got a message across. And I hope that you would receive it and that you would, um, you know, really let those words emanate and, and, and allow yourself to be stronger and to know that the enemy is the one who's who's we're fighting against and not to fight against all of God's children and if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior it is the most important thing that you will ever do in your life once you give your life to Jesus Some people think that if you give your life to Jesus, that you are like a zombie or something, that you don't have control of your own life, that, that God's going to control you like this. No, he wants to love you. He wants to give you so much. He wants to help you. And he wants to make your life better. He's our parent. He's trying to help you. He's trying to guide you. And when, when, when I say to give your life to Jesus, or it's God saying that, God wants you to give your life to Jesus. He wants you to give your life to him because he's trying to save you from the wicked enemy. If you don't give your life to Jesus, the enemy has a right to take you. You will be loved. You will be protected. You will be guided so that you can get through this life, which is difficult. It's difficult. And it's getting harder because the enemy is rising up more and more. And God's trying to step up his, not trying, God is stepping up his plan against the enemy. So we have to give ourselves to God. Let him protect us. Let him guide us. Because to be honest, we don't know how to do it on our own. We're messing it up, people. We're messing it up. And if you don't think that you're messing up your life, if you think that you are in so much control of your own life and that you don't have any problems and that you, you know, you have enough money to buy whatever you want and life is good, guess what? The enemy has you right where he wants you. The enemy has you right under his thumb. He has you pulled away from God so far. He has lied to you so much that you think you don't need God, that your life is perfect and your life is going great. But when you pass from this earth, when you pass from this life, he will take you down to a horrible place for eternity. And it will be too late to accept God then. Because once he has you, he has the right to take you. And God can't get you back out of his grasp. So even if you think your life is going great and you don't need God and you think you are in control of your own life, you're not. The enemy is controlling you and he's working double time on you. He got in, not by a sliver, but by a huge gap. He got in and he is working so hard double time on you to separate you from God. The wedge is so huge between you and God that you think you don't need him. You do, my friend. We all need him in a very, very desperate way. So I am asking you, and I know God is asking you, and I know that Jesus is asking you, and I know Holy Spirit is asking you, and I know if you have any family members that have passed before you who were believers and they're in heaven, family members and friends, believe me, they're asking you. It is the most important thing you will do in your life. 
is to give your life. Surrender your life. Surrender your soul to our maker. And when you do that, you will be saved from the darkness when you're when it is your time to pass from this earth and we are all going to pass. We are all going to, the flesh is going to die. And when they say we're going to pass from this earth, what do you think that means? What do you mean we're going to pass? It means we're going to pass to another dimension. We are going to pass to another world. You're either going to go to the world of Satan or you're going to go to the world of God. That's where you're going to pass to. We pass on. You know, some people don't like to say, oh, um, you know, so-and-so died um, when somebody, you know, left. They actually physically died. They don't like to say, uh, you know, I don't want to say names, but, you know, a person died. They say the person has passed or they have passed on. Where do you think that phrase came from? It is a real phrase. It has true meaning. It means that they passed to the next world. They passed on to another life, the life of eternity. This was a life of your testing ground. We came here for different purposes, but we came here to prove to God that we are worthy to come to his world, heaven, you know, his spiritual world after this one, and that we will honor him. We cannot bring sin to heaven. We can't. We can't enter heaven with sin and and greed and hatred and, and cruelness and meanness. We cannot enter heaven in that state. We have to. The only place you can enter in that state is hell. So when we want to pass on, we need to have our hearts ready. We need to be pure. We need to have Jesus in there. And when you ask God, we need to ask God for forgiveness of our sins. And when we do that, he forgives us. The sins are gone. Now we can enter heaven as a pure soul. And we also have to acknowledge that Jesus came from heaven. He's the son of God. He came down here to die and be the sacrifice. When he sacrificed his life for us, he said to the enemy, he defeated the enemy, and he said, I am the sacrifice for all of these people. I will take them under my wing. I will take them to heaven if they want to. And if you want it, he cannot have you. And you have to say the words, I want you, Jesus. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I do not want to go to hell. I do not want the enemy to take me to that horrible place. I want to come with you. I want to be loved. I want the truth. I want to I want to come to this wonderful place where I will be loved forever and there will be no sin. There will be nothing bad. Only bliss. What an amazing, amazing life waiting for us all. We are all worthy of it when we ask God for forgiveness. Lord, God, I'm sorry I was bad. I'm sorry. Just like our children, we want our children to come to us and tell us what they did bad, and we will forgive them. And God is our parent, and he will forgive us. He just wants us to ask for forgiveness and be sorry, truly sorry. And he wants us to acknowledge that his son, Jesus, died for us so the enemy can't have us. And and now we have a choice. The enemy can't take us because we have a choice. When Jesus made the sacrifice, he he defeated the, sick, the, the, the darkness. He defeated the enemy. So now if we say, Jesus, I want you. I accept what you did for me. I believe what you did for me. And I'm so grateful what, what you did for me. I want to come with you. Then we will be going to heaven with Jesus, Father God, and Holy Spirit. And the enemy will have to cross you off of his list. He will cross you off of his book. He thought he was going to have you, and he can't have you now. And if that sounds good, and you want a better life, and you want to step out of the darkness, and you want to step into the light, and you want to be saved, and, and for the rest of your time on this planet, God is going to, he's going to guide you. And you can put on his armor, and you can have Jesus inside you, helping you, and Holy Spirit helping you, and loving you. And you will never feel lonely, and you will feel blessed all the time. And God will help you to get through this life to the other side. To the other side 
where we will go back to our Father God, to our Maker, and we will live eternity in an amazing, loving place with all of our loved ones and millions of other people that made it there. There is no darkness. There is no sickness. There is no hatred, no poverty, and, and, and no um, fear, no depression, no problems. Happiness. Bliss. When we get through this life, and we will, that is what will be waiting for you. But you need to accept it. You need to want it. And if you feel like you want it, and you want to step out of the darkness and step into the light, put the darkness behind you, which is the enemy. He will have to go behind you now. Then you would repeat these words after me. And first I want to say, a, I just want to say a quick prayer. I ask Holy Spirit that you will come and you will minister to whoever is accepting this message right now, that you will open their heart and prepare them for Jesus, prepare them for God, and, and, and prepare them for the love that they're going to receive. Prepare their minds and their hearts and their bodies to receive Jesus Christ. And I command the wicked, unholy spirits to leave this meeting, to leave this intervention, this divine intervention that God has given us. I command you out, all wicked spirits, I bind you to the foot of the cross where you are defeated by Jesus and through the authority of Jesus Christ. I command you to leave my surrounding and the person who's going to receive Jesus Christ right now through the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. So if you're ready and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can repeat after me. <laughs> I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I believe he came from heaven and he came down to earth. And he sacrificed himself on the cross for us to save us from the enemy, from darkness. He shed his blood for us. And I believe he defeated the darkness. And I believe that he arose again and he is back in heaven with our Father God. And he is seated at the right hand of our Father in heaven. And now I ask God for forgiveness of my sins. Just ask him. Really mean it. Come to him with a repentant heart and say, God, please forgive me for my, my sins. Please forgive me for being, you know, doing all those things all the bad things, all the wrongs that I've done in my life, please forgive me now, and he will, no matter how big or small, he will forgive you. And now, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I ask him to come and live inside me. I ask Jesus to come in my heart now, And Jesus just stepped inside you, his spirit. He just stepped inside you. And now you say, I reject the enemy. I reject all darkness. And I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for saving me today. <laughs> so you are saved. That means the enemy cannot take your soul when you pass away. You just gave your life to Jesus. You just gave your life to God. And you will go to heaven. And we all do things wrong. And God wants us to be the best we can be. But we will. We, he knows that we live in a fallen world. And the enemy, is, will, he's, he's always working on us. And we do things wrong. All he wants is us to come to him whenever we do things wrong, to recognize it, and say, God, please forgive me. Oh, I'm going to try and do better. And all we can do is do our best. And keep talking to God. Keep talking to Jesus. You just ask him to step inside you. He's in you. He's a spirit. You have a spirit in you. And Jesus is a spirit. He came into you. And Holy Spirit is around you all the time. And, and, and you just say, you know, talk to him like he's your friend. He is your friend. And um, 
when you go places, yes, prayer is good. You know, we can get in a quiet place and meditate and pray. Pray to God, you know, pray to Jesus and pray with Holy Spirit and pray and pray. Whatever you want to pray for, that's good. But also, Jesus is right here. Holy Spirit is right here. And we can talk to him and have a relationship with him. And we want to have a relationship with God, even though he's in heaven. He's right here too. He made you. And wherever you go, you know, wherever you are, just talk and walk and, and sing and praise God. And and um, he, he can read your mind so you don't have to say it out loud if you don't want to. You can just be talking to God and Jesus inside your mind. Or if you say it out loud, it's even better. Because the enemy can't read your mind, but he knows what you're saying with your mouth. And the more you praise God, the more you're talking about him. Remember that part that says, speak, constantly speak my words with your mouth off your tongue. When we do that, the enemy flees because he hates Jesus. He hates God. He doesn't want to hear it. You know, some terrible, crazy music that you hate, you know, like whatever. If you don't like a certain sound, and oh, nails on the chalkboard, um, you know, just some sounds that you can't stand. That's what it sounds like to him when you say the name Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, I give you a hug. I love you, God. The enemy flees. He can't stand it. It hurts his ears, and he will run in the sound of Jesus. That is another tool for you, my friend. And, and you need to go to Ephesians in the Bible, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. And it'll tell you how to put on God's armor. And you need to say it out loud so the enemy can hear you. And imagine you are protected all day and say it every day. And one more thing I like to add. It is really important to thank God for everything we have. No matter how big or small, whatever you have in your life, it is a blessing. And we can find blessings in just about anything. You know, the smallest things. Whatever, you know, you may not have gourmet meals. I don't. Um, whatever we have. I, I, I eat my famous peanut butter and jam toast every day. I live on that. Um, you know, I thank him for that peanut butter and jam toast. I thank him whatever, whatever I'm about to eat. And um, I thank him when I wake up every day. I say, Lord, I thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you for saving me. Every day I thank him for saving me. It isn't a one-time deal that we just say, thank you, God. Remember how you just said, thank you, God, for saving me? We need, to, we need to thank him every day for saving us. Every day is a blessing that we're alive and that we have God in our life. It is a true blessing that he is with us. I, am, I for one, am very thankful. So, you know, some people say, oh, I don't have much. It doesn't, you don't need much. You can't take it to heaven with you. You can't load up your suitcases and, and, and bring them into a spiritual world. You can't take anything with you except for your, your insides, your spirit. So, you know, work on being a better person because that's all that could go to heaven is you. So, you know, work on being the best that you can be. We are all a work in progress. And we are all a wonderful creation of our Father God. And he wants us to be amazing. He wants us to be filled with his, his love and his peace and his joy. And, his, and he wants us to be kind to people. And now that you are, a, and we, call it, we say a born-again Christian, got to figure out these glasses, because now you are born again of the spirit. Your, your spirit, you were born of the flesh when you were born from your parents. And now there's a spirit in you, or always has been. But when you accept God, now your spirit is able to be born again and you're going to go to heaven. So work on yourself because that spirit in you needs work too so that you can be the best you can be when it's time to go to heaven. But not only that, you can be the best that you can be on this planet because the other thing that, you know, a couple purposes of why we're here, one is we need to be honoring our Father God and giving him the glory and, and honor for giving us life and for the beautiful life that's waiting for us after this life. He's going to give us that. But we also need to tell everyone about him and about the life that is waiting for them. Tell them that the enemy is hard at work trying to take them from God. And we have to let them know that God is real and that, that they need to give their life to Jesus. It's very, very important. 
So it doesn't matter if you were just born again yourself. You are ready, my friend, to go and start preaching to everyone and teaching all about God and all about Jesus. Let everyone know what what's really happening behind the scenes. The enemy's trying to take them and, 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 and promote love, love, love. Promote God and Jesus. And you will make it. And you will make it abundantly. And and um, we don't want to just survive this world. We want to enjoy it too. God put wonderful things around us too. God just helped me to think of this. And I did think of it earlier. And I knew if I did a video that I would like to mention this. The smallest things are God's amazing creation. And we need to stop and smell the roses, so to speak. I have like a, a covered porch, right? Like an overhang. And um, the birds always want to make their nest on my porch. And I leave them. And I I don't, they started to make the nest a couple months ago. And, um, and I, I, I usually, you know, whatever. When I saw the nest, I stopped using my front door because they're right at the front door, right like there. And I don't want to bug them, so I just keep using the back door. And, you know, I can peek out the window and I can look at them. And, oh, the little beaks are out and they're like waiting for the mom to bring the worms and the food. And I love it so much. And um, there's three in there. So three amazing little birds in there. And today, I keep seeing the mom not there and then I worry, where is she? But she just goes and gets food. But this time... I was able to see like close enough and I actually saw her drop the worm into the baby's mouth. It was amazing. I loved it. And it just brought me so much joy. So these are the kind of things that God has created for us. You know, that's just me. I just love that. I love nature. And God wants us to see the creations. Stop and, and look at what else he has created. Not just fancy cars, fancy houses and gourmet meals and, and money, money, and, you know, all these precious things. He has created everything around you. And it is a shame if you don't notice all of God's creations and to appreciate it, that he wants us to notice these things. He wants us to see these things. You know, I have flowers in my garden and they're, and they're just so beautiful. They're blossoming and I just love it. You know, I get right down there, smell them and, you know, I'm like, you know, petting them and touching it. Oh, I love you. And, you know, these are, this is all the things that God gave us. There is beauty in this world. There are wonderful things in this world. God wants us to see those things and block out all the, all the negative things that the enemy is trying to distract you with. Close your eyes, put your blinders on and only see God. Only see what God wants us to see. He doesn't want us to see all the bad in the world. So just put those blinders on and, and, and go forward through this world and only see God's world, not the negative world that the enemy wants you to see. It's there. We know it's there. We don't need to keep, you know, looking at it and, and thinking about it and, and letting him infect us. We need to change that. We need to, we need to look up to the sky and know that heaven is up there and God is up there. And, um, and that, you know, our wonderful God, our Father, created such wonderful things around us. And let's focus on that. Look at God's beauty. Look at God's creations. And that's how we will get through this life. Not just by making it. You know how we say, oh, making it through. We're going to get through life in a better way when we see God's creations and we appreciate it and um, and we just know, wow, God gave life to that and God, his plan is so amazing that everything feeds everything. Everything works this way. It's just an amazing circle of life. So start opening your eyes to the good things. There's so much good out there and, and you know, we gotta, we gotta protect ourselves but we can block out the bad to a great degree. So I believe that is a message that God wants you to hear. I personally want you to hear that, but I know that God wants you to hear that too. It's very important. So on that note, I wish you all an amazing day. Uh, I suppose it's getting on tonight. It's nighttime pretty much. 
um, amazing day and days ahead. And if you want to email me and let me know if you got saved, let me know any questions you have. I just would love to hear your comments. And you can email me at Tammy, T-A-M-I, hands, H-A-N-D-S, ministries at gmail.com. And it's in the description below. And um, I look forward to any comments. if I can help you in any way. So keep up the faith. Keep up the good work. Keep your love going strong for God. Keep the oak tree anointing. Keep planted firm in the ground. Do not let the enemy budge you or cause you to stumble because you are made in God's image. You are a child of the Almighty Father God, and we are strong in the Lord. God, you know, we may not be so strong this way, but we're strong this way and in our hearts and, you know, every way. So um, on that note, um, I hope that you have a chance to look at the other videos that God has prompted me to make in all of his messages, Tammy Hands Ministries, on YouTube. And um, as long as he is speaking to me, these I will be continuing to make videos. And um, I wish you a great day, my friend, and uh, we'll see you soon.